Welcome everybody. Um, it's really good to have you all here for our final live session. Uh, as you all know, DIFF is online this year and uh, it's been quite an amazing experience for us who are setting it up and we've really enjoyed the DIFF live, especially because we actually get to interact with people. Um, so it's been very, very special experience and I hope you're going to really take away something from this panel. Um, while thinking about all the live panels we wanted to do, we felt in this very changing world of indie filmmaking, now changing even faster than ever because of COVID, that this was a really important subject. Like we all need to understand what OTT is doing to us, what we as indie filmmakers can expect from OTT platforms, how it's changing our world. So that's why uh, I'd like to uh, invite everybody who's on the panel to join us. Uh, the panel is being hosted uh, by, moderated by Bardwaj Rangan. He is an amazing uh, author and critic, film critic. He's also uh, um, the person for, you know, the South Indian, South editor for Film Companion. So welcome Bardwaj. Next, I'd like to invite Kim C. Singh. Uh, is Kim C. I guess while she's joining us, I would like to say that she's an independent producer. She made this most amazing film. She produced the most amazing film, Sony, that I think a lot of you must have seen. And she just recently came back from her showing her second film, Milestone at Venice. I know she's working on it still, so it's still a work in progress, but thank you so much for joining us. Kim thank C. you for having me. Um, I would also like to invite old friend Suri Gopalan. He is the person who founded Vista India. And even though we don't have the big platform speaking to us directly, because he is the main aggregator uh, in India, I think for Netflix, if not the only aggregator, Suri, please tell us more about this. You can tell us what people are looking for and how we may get on screens and get to audiences. So please do guide us on that. Um, next, I would like to invite Gurvinder Singh. Gurvinder Singh, as I'm sure you all know, is an amazing filmmaker. He's an award-winning award winning filmmaker, and he has come to diff with two films already. Uh, we love his work. He's also participated in our mentorship program that we have for Himalayan filmmakers. So Gurinder is really a diff regular, and this is the first time we are seeing him this time. Uh, but welcome, very thank nice you. to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ritu. And lastly, there is Gaurav Raturi. I'd like to welcome you here. I know you started working with short films and started film booths, but now you've taken on this kind of enterprise idea of starting a platform for in independent filmmakers. And I know that's a very tough job and we really want to wish you the best. And I hope that, you know, you can do something for indie filmmakers. So thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot, Ritu. Yes, definitely. So that's the idea. I'd like to leave you all. Um, I'm going to be listening into this conversation mm -hmm. and I'm going to leave you in the able hands of Bardwaj to take it further. Thank you. Thank you, Ritu, for that introduction. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, it's so nice to be here with all of you. Uh, I've heard of all of you. I've met some of you. Uh, the others I'm very happy to meet. Uh, first, I thought I'd begin with a little request to our audience. We encourage all our audience members to ask questions. You can keep sending them in through the conversation. We have set aside the last 15 to 20 minutes of the session for your questions and answers. You will notice a Q&A tab in the bottom of the corner, in the bottom corner of Zoom. Please type your questions there. We will only be taking typed in questions. Uh, do check whether other people have uh, asked the same question so that you don't keep repeating questions. Uh, and also you can upvote questions that will be helpful to prioritize in case we are running short on time. So uh, hopefully we'll have this great Q&A session uh, at the end. But before that, I would like to start with uh, a somewhat existential question, if I may, uh, and I'm throwing this open to all of you. You know, when people talk of OTT, uh, the, the very first thing that, that mainstream films have had to face is that the first 10 minutes should grab you. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, uh, that's something that, 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 that's a mantra almost that, that, that OTT platforms keep repeating, that the first 10 minutes should grab you, otherwise the audience would click to something else. Uh, they'll, they, they have the option to switch to something else. Uh, when it comes to indie films, uh, because the word indie is a very 
it's a broad spectrum and, and, it, and it ranges across many kinds of films. But let's take the typical art house film where it might take you 10 to 15 minutes just to enter the film because of a certain way it's set up or something like that. Is OTT even the right space for uh, an indie film? I mean, I would just like to begin with that question. Any, anybody that wants to begin? Kimsi, you want to begin? Um, well, sure. I think uh, it's it totally depends on the audience. Right. You know, um, if anybody wants to just watch the film, and uh, I understand your thing about that. You know, you just have to grab the audience from the very first minute, or not even the tenth minute. But it, my answer would be just uh, the mood of the audience at that very point, and uh, and the audience itself, basically, the person itself who's watching it. Okay. Yeah, I think Bharatwaj, I want to uh, pitch in with a point. So I think the independent filmmakers and the films do not want to cater to the brackets which the mainstream world brings in, which is that right. they do not want to enter the same formula, you know, aggression or the, the, the reason to capture the entire market. I don't think the independent films have that purpose ever and they will ever be right. defined by such a aggressive uh, attention deficit mentality that you know in the 10 minutes you have to catch the audience i think we all know that the independent films do not cater to that mindset and it's about storytelling over a period of time where you take the user through the entire journey and right. and and the beauty is discovered with every second and moment and minutes so right. that's what i personally feel right right uh, so uh, you know, I, I, I was uh, uh, the the other thing I was I was I was asking is because uh, right now when I speak to people from uh, the big platforms like Amazon and Netflix, uh, one thing they constantly say is that uh, is that they are right now targeting the end user, which they typically uh, characterize as a mainstream movie consumer. Uh, so. Are those big platforms, uh, as opposed to Cinema Pruner, are those big platforms even a good place for, not good necessarily, good is a very loaded word, but is that even the right place for certain kind of indie films where they might get lost in a tidal wave of all other kinds of uh, stuff and they may not be nurtured as much? Right. I think uh, personally, uh, I think every film wants to reach out to the right audiences and all platforms are different. I don't think, uh, you know, they are competing or they are, uh, you know, up against each other. It's just uh, how do uh, films reach out to the audiences? I think that's the main important thing here. I think right now we are also seeing a lot of uh, developments happening in the OTT and the online space. I okay. think at Cinema, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create another alternative for independent filmmakers. It doesn't exist. And the idea is to be, uh, to enable filmmakers to reach to the audiences through technology and through the power of OTT streaming. I think that's the core, uh, you know, uh, idea. And I think I would definitely like to share more, uh, but I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, that the films do get lost. I think uh, the most important thing for a filmmaker is that are people able to access the film? Um, you know, that's, that's the most important thing. Uh, but yes, we know that there is, there is a huge... Uh, saturation in terms of you know different players coming in we have 60 ott uh, platforms you know so so yes it is a very cluttered market right now and there are lots and lots of films so yes every film needs to stand out on its own and needs to give um, a positioning or a statement which allows people to uh, you know uh, to reach the film um, yeah okay suri do you have anything to add to that yeah, my my observation uh, largely is that, you know, there was this, I think, a lot of hope that uh, these foreign, uh, you know, companies, the OTT companies would support uh, our, our more independent and story driven films. Um, it's been a little disappointing on that front uh, in the fact that uh, if you've noticed now that all the large commercial films are compressing their windows to come within 30 days of theatrical or 40 days of theatrical. And uh, we found uh, it a little difficult 
to be able to license a lot of our indie content. Uh, it's it, you could have the same story, right? Uh, maybe a story that Gurinder would tell, but if you would put a big uh, Holly Bollywood uh, hero in it, all of a sudden it's easier to sell that film than it is to maybe have just a character actor. So uh, it's kind of uh, it's it's a, it's I think a a gold rush for the maximum number of subscribers, uh, whether it be with Amazon Prime or whether it be with Netflix or Hotstar. Uh, it, uh, it, it, in, in many ways, it echoes a broadcast television to a certain extent, because we saw that same sort of flurry in broadcast TV, um, where I often felt that a good film which might not have necessarily been a commercial hit, but uh, but was a good film would 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 have a, a decent shot at uh, at theatrical. I mean, at uh, at television broadcast, never found a home. So it seems to be some sort of a pattern that's uh, that sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, you know sort of again coming back. Uh, but I'm hopeful that you know guys like Gaurav and uh, other companies as Mubi, I know that's, uh, that they're active in terms of licensing alternative content from us. Um, the license fees, of course, in these kind of situations are small. Uh, and uh, the, it, it's like, I, I feel a little, uh, uh, little disappointed, I would say that, that with such a large country that we have, you know, I mean, for instance, you know, Korean cinema, they've been able to find a very active Korean audience, right? And, and then they've shot up to the world stage. It's not that uh, it's the other way around. You know? yeah. uh, they found a very, very receptive audience within their own country. That for me is something very, uh, which I've not been able to find in India as yet, uh, uh, thing because we, we see that, uh, you know, that, that we, we find great gems uh, that come out, but are unable to sustain themselves, unable to get a theatrical at times, unable to find uh, you know uh, any other platform for broadcasters to buy it. So uh, I'm wondering, is it is it because we might genuinely not have such a audience in India that, that all audience in India is? I mean, that's a question. It's a toss up, you know, for me. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know how to explain it. Gurvinder, how would yeah you? yeah hi hi hi, thank you Suri for articulating that because you know I completely believe with you know so I will go back to you know the fact that uh, just a couple of years ago this was seeming a very promising avenue for filmmakers like me you know and many um, uh, others who are making cinema uh, making cinema taking cinema as a very serious medium you know not just as a medium of uh, mass appeal or entertainment. And, uh, um, you know, the, the, new, the Indian New Wave happened in the 70, late 70s and 80s, and maybe it continued for 15 odd years, 20 years. Uh, the problem with those films were that, again, you know, that there was no theatrical avenue for those films, you know. So after an odd uh, Doordarshan telecast, those films disappeared. You didn't know where to access those films unless you went to a film archives or a film appreciation course where you had the luxury of watching a film in say in Pune on a, on a, on a, on a screen, even, either you couldn't even access them on a video cassette or anything. So those films kind of, you know, the whole, unless Doordarshan telecast those films, those films were never seen and they completely disappeared from our, uh, you know, cultural uh, cinema, cinema, cinema culture. Uh, and now it seemed that, you know, we were, uh, this new technology, the, the, uh, the, the digital, the internet was uh, kind of, you know, um, a saving grace for our kind of cinema and uh, after making a film after having it um, shown at a few festivals um, uh, maybe a limited theatrical release which I have tried for my film didn't work because um, theatrical is an altogether different ball game um, so one thought that you know at least your films would be, stay alive you know and available one didn't want anything more that you know, if today people write to me, ask me where can I watch your thing, I say it's nowhere. You know, a film which has been to Cannes, and you know, 
it was on Netflix for three years, but then after that, it just disappeared. Nobody wants to take that film. Um, similarly with my first film, it's not on any platform. I and mean, it's not on any platform. Uh, I made a film uh, last year. It's a film in Pahari language and nobody wants to take it because it's again, and, and then and, and add it, you know, the, the question of language. You know. Everybody wants Hindi content. I have approached Amazon. You know, I, 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 let's, let's not take names here. I've spoken to platforms about uh, financing films and, and they're simply not interested in financing non-Hindi content. So what, are, what, what is this, you know? Uh, are we, I mean, you know, uh, so this, it, it's, it's completely disappointing right now and um, uh, to not have this avenue, uh, which seemed very promising two years ago and completely, it's, it's, I think it's completely gone, they have gone completely mainstream, they've gone completely popular uh, and uh, we are back to square one where we were. Uh, and it's going to have uh, a lot of new producers were putting money into independent filmmaking because of this pla these platforms, because they felt they could at least recover the cost of making, even if not make a profit. And, uh, and it's going to have a cascading effect. They are now realizing that these films are not easy to sell. And uh, so it's going to affect financing for independent filmmaking. Uh, and now with the COVID, this, this kind of a situation, it's, it's, a, it's a double blow, I think, which we have to deal with. Uh, uh, and the wonderful films we have seen in the last five, six years, I think is going to the whole thing is going to slow down now. I was going to ask uh, Kimsi this, and you know, thank you, Gurvinder, for broaching that subject. You know, when you're talking about this cascading effect, uh, as a producer, Kimsi, when, uh, you know, when in mainstream cinema, uh, when a film is announced or a project is mounted, uh, the OTT sale amount becomes a part of the production budget. You know, it's like that, that forms a part of the budget. So that kind of a thing. Do you envision a time ever when that can happen with independent cinema? Like you put together a project, let's say like a filmmaker who's been around, like Gurvinder or whoever it is, like who's been to festivals and things like that, and you get together and do you say that that's, that model is going to become possible where this, the OTT sale amount becomes a bit of a seed money for the, uh, for the development of the film itself? It is possible, but I think for that, I mean, as per my experience, you need to have some known face in the film. They need something to sell and and it's it's very painful to say, but you know, an independent director's sole name is not enough to impress them or to commission a project. And um, and I also think that story again is important, but they wouldn't give weightage to the story as well. So overall, you know, the whole film, the story, the actors, the director, the crew. I think for them, the most important is a known face, yeah. and of course. I would say um, a slow cinema would not be their kind of a movie. Um, something that you can um, sensationalize, I think probably they would be ready to commission. But this is, I'm just totally speaking from my experience and I agree with Gurvinder about pitching your projects to multiple OTT platforms and the kind of response that you get. Uh, it is really um, painful and sad. No, God, I, I, I was God. simply told that please bring the Hindi script and we will consider it. Simple. Nothing. I mean, <laughs> there was no other consideration. I, I just need to make Hindi films and I'll get started getting finance. Oh, that's you know. good. I I have, uh, there's another factor that was added in my case, and that was being a known face. So, <laughs> you know, so yeah. Eric Gurvinder, let, let us say Gaurav and me and you go and pitch to a platform. And uh, we have, uh, and Gaurav and, and me have Ranveer Kapoor. And you have a great character actor from NSG. Of course, my film will get funded. <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> okay. okay, right now, I mean, okay, we, we started speaking about funding, but let's not, I'm, I mean, I, I'm not even talking of funding, you know. Right. I'm, talking of, I'm talking of films which are already made and we're just asking for their release, you know. Correct. Right. Right now, that's the main concern. I also, uh, yeah. just to add in, sorry to interrupt, but I also feel that these days, I think it has become easy to make films 
and it has become more difficult to release them and get to the audiences. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I have a question for Kim C because you know I discovered Sony on Netflix, and I think uh, I discovered Gitika as a brilliant actress, you know, and 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 Saloni and the entire you know the landscape of the film. Being a Delhiite myself, so I think. Uh, 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 would you not take a lot of positives on the fact that you know your your film could uh, come on Netflix and and get to so many people? I do. I do absolutely agree with that. I mean, yeah. had it not for Netflix, I mean, uh, Sony would have been forgotten, and it's basically it has got another life after the festivals. But I would like to say that that was two years ago, you know, when things were different. And Sony was among the very uh, few early acquisitions or uh, somewhere where Netflix came in as distributor and one of the very early Hindi content. And I must emphasize on that. And that's why, you know, people, uh, OTT platforms were interested in it. But if you talk about things right now, it has become very difficult. So Gaurav, you're at the center of this okay. in a way because you <laughs> represent the OTT space. Well, I, I want to ask you, see, in the, in the West, uh, or at least in the US I've seen, there are specialized art house cinemas with their specialized niche audiences and they only screen right. uh, art house films, indie films and things like that. Uh, we don't have that culture here in, in, in India. Yes. Uh, uh, what, what, what made you say that this is the need of the hour and there is an audience for this because every business model is, you mean, you're also thinking of, uh, uh, you know, the revenues and things like that, right? You're not just thinking about this is a good thing to do. So can you just take us through that? Sure. Sure. So, uh, Bhagavad, basically I, I was a true, uh, you know, film fan and I, I yeah. used to go to all festivals. In fact, uh, to watch Gurvinder's film, I was um, in Mumbai, I was uh, at my sister's place in Bandra and I think the film was playing at Lower Parel early uh, morning 10.30 show. And as a diehard fan, I went all the way, you know, like a one hour journey and saw the film. But I don't think a lot of cinephiles in India can do that because there are lots and lots of people in India who want to be at Mami, who want to watch these brilliant festival films and the other films. And personally, how it all started is that um, I used to create my own independent screenings in Delhi. And over a span of one year, I was screening short films and some independent films to people. And I saw that there is a set of audience, you know, it's not the millions, it's the thousands, which we can still tap to, who want to watch irrespective of whether there is a brand, there is a big star. Uh, they are people who value offbeat, taste-based, regional, rustic, hinterland stories, who have a taste and who do not want to follow the mainstream. And when I tested this over a span of one, one and a half years, I realized that there can be a potential audience. So this was the first pillar in me testing out independent screening in Delhi. The second pillar was that if people can stand for three hours to watch a, a film at Mami or at other festival, can travel across India to, to view a film, uh, right? Uh, then why can't the film be accessible to the people who could not watch it or could not come to the festival? And the third thing was for me, which was complete astonishment is that if a uh, Ib Aliu wins the, you know, the best film at Mumbai Film Festival, which is one of the, you know, the, the best festivals we have, then why can't it get a release online when there are 10,000 or 50,000 people who would want to watch the film. And I'm still waiting for the film to come out. And I think after an astonishment of not finding these films. So if you look at Mehsampur, uh, you know, Sexy Durga, Pratik Wat's film, Every year, the winning films are nowhere on the OTT landscape. And after huge astonishment, I felt that maybe we could start. So, so that was the third pillar in me pushing out uh, uh, this whole uh, you know, concept of cinema, you know, where we understand that there is huge PNA in distributing films in the current theatrical setup. And it doesn't make sense because you have to do a pan-India marketing. You have to do an entire big uh, you know, PNA budget. Why can't you do it? at say one tenth or one twentieth the cost, use it in a in an online way. So what we picked basically is I said that can we not ticketize the whole streaming uh, ideology? Like can we not make it a pay per view platform where people are just buying tickets and watching the film in an online way? And I think right. for me what worked is the top OTT platform because in the last three years 
they have inculcated a habit of watching films online buying films because to be honest as as uh, you know as indians i've I, we have not built a culture of buying f- films there has been a lot of forums where free films were available you know a lot of events where we could easily watch films i used to get surprised when i used to go for the national film award film screenings uh, post the award uh, because the entire delhi audience would come and watch these films and they were being shown free of cost so there is an audience who wants to watch these films but maybe the habit of paying a price and then watching is not cul- inculcated but in the last three years we did see that happening with digital content being a new um, you know purchasing element or a product and i think on the basis of that um, i i felt that i could vision out that yes independent filmmakers can utilize the power of streaming and a digital theater and they do not need millions the whole idea is can they not be discovered can they not have the film available anybody in the entire world wants to watch a film it should be available so i think with that discoverability angle is um, what the idea of cinema pneur um, you know um, came as and i think uh, since you asked the revenue and sustainability i think we've made a model in a way that it it uh, recognizes uh, the value of a film it ensures that uh, the filmmakers are appreciated for taking risk for bringing unheard stories and venturing out into a into a world which a lot of creators aren't doing that and obviously it's going to take some time but what because i think it's going to be a, a long journey yeah because the audiences also need to um, figure it out and i think um, i personally we just felt that this is another way where we could uh, build this and there aren't any benchmarks so i think we are learning as we are uh, you know growing as we are bringing more films and the response has been tremendous from the independent filmmakers which really gave me a validation that yes we have we have found something which is very interesting so uh, since you say audience i also want to bring in the concept of sensitization of the audience or or you know like education now i was born in the 70s i grew up with doordarshan for a long time and because there was nothing else to watch i watched a whole bunch of uh, what was then called parallel cinema what today would probably called art cinema uh, and therefore you know when you start watching at a very young age uh, you know it becomes part of your 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 cultural dna or mental makeup or whatever you want to call it now today's kids are like starting off w- w- with very different kinds of films and because they have the whole world available to them uh, they pick and choose stuff that they already want to watch so right. this is again a question to all of you uh how do we ask uh like like youngsters of this generation uh to say listen calm down watch a certain kind of film is that something that we need to do is it even possible what what do you guys think i'd like to hear from all of you actually gurvinder you want to start okay yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, uh... Um, yeah as you say it's 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 an inculcation which has to start at an early age and uh, and and i think you cannot look at cinema in isolation cinema is not something you know you can you cannot just be say interested in cinema and not go to an art gallery or not attend a poetry reading or not go for a, a music recital so it's it's all it's all interlinked you know and i i i don't think there is any cinema lover who is not an art lover you know who is not a uh, avid reader so it 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 all has to go hand in hand and we cannot create a cinema audience without c- creating a culture of uh, you know like like in europe people take the children to museums we don't have that culture you know we want to we now we only take our children to multiplexes i i never really don't have any answer for that you know how oh, we're going to change that and with the kind of politics being practice in this country right now art is perhaps uh, the least priority not even a priority i think you know for uh, our state and government you know so uh, i don't know sounds very depressing right now <laughs> and, and, and and coming back to the ot platforms you know what i wanted to also say that fine you know nobody is saying that they should not be showing means but they should be showing popular faces they, of course because it is eventually it's a business you know and they want to succeed at business and make money of course they should do all that 
but uh, doing that you know they could they could, at the same time they could have a, a kind of uh, you know a, say a niche segment a different segment within that you know you know so that you know when you go to, like if, if my film is on netflix it will never show on the home page you know nobody will discover the film unless i have i want i have heard about the film or read about it somebody has talked about it then only i will go and watch that film you know if you go on the home page of any of these otts you see b great films you see c great films you know you see soft porn but you will not find anything sensible there so why can't within within the within the within the within in the business model why can't they create a segment which you know that this segment exists and if you click on the segment you will get a film uh, you get to watch content with a different kind of sensibility and i'm sure uh, then you then the audience will go looking for uh, in within that segment within that you know sub segment if you create a say a mark it's all it's all about branding and marketing they have to do that then only uh, they uh, people will find films on the problem is okay fine films like our will never get that kind of you know viewership on these ott platforms uh, if uh, if if they are kind of you know uh, just thrown in with a bunch of films so they this just kind of even on notice then they just disappear suri do you have something to say add to that uh, uh, bharadwaj i i i think the times uh, like bob dylan says they are changing uh, and and uh, and if you look at a, 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 a you know to just measure the time spent on in maybe a viral video on tiktok uh, i mean that reflects uh, what what uh, what a society is uh, is sort of interested in in terms of of an audience and uh, i think it's very challenging to to really bring about film appreciation in in uh, firstly i think our educational system itself is geared towards uh, non appreciation of the arts okay uh, outside your <clears throat> you know uh, thing so so while we can keep on thumping our uh, our chest that uh, that we are the world's largest filmmakers it largely is fantasy filmmaking that is uh, that that's not i wouldn't i wouldn't really say that our stories are the greatest in the world you know uh, at a commercial level uh, we just happen to like those stories and it's it's a sort of uh, not unky type of a thing so so in the broader context i feel uh, i i tend to uh, agree with gurvinder that uh, that given the internet and the availability of information and everything else uh, our 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 past uh, you know sort of population of youth in this country seem to be skewing towards another direction and uh, and uh, i'm not seeing anything genuine happen not just in, uh, in 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 cinema but in any other type of art medium coming out of india you know uh, it's 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 uh, you know it's disappointing i would say yeah like like uh, i was like we somebody spoke about south korea you know like last year i was at the busan film festival and it was amazing you know they it, it, it's a festival which is which is it's, it's not even uh, it's 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 so well attended you know and and they have all kinds of film making uh, films showing in the festival they have children's films they have uh, uh, popular films they have concerts they have a very art house cinema um they have you know they like they uh, they have these red carpets gala events everything you know and there is like people families come you know it's like families have traveled from other cities children hanging around so it's like you know they have been able to inculcate that kind of a uh, uh, as and now if south korean cinema is one of the biggest uh, art house cinema in the world you know and uh, competing with the chinese and the uh, and the iranian cinema and Uh, and they have been because they have i don't know how they did it maybe we one needs to study the model how they managed to uh, make uh, the general public aware that you know that uh, uh, that uh, cinema uh, about cinema as an art form about something that you know that there are various kinds of films exist and it's not just uh, uh, popular uh, films which you which you uh, which are marketed and uh, so um, so i don't know I, it's, it's something which we and um, at, 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 i'm sure it's, it must have started at a very uh, at, the, at at school level you know they kind of must have started that and um, and then also you know kind of state support has in the kind of uh, 
um, the uh, you know if you compare it like if Busan is a state funded festival compare it with Ifi you know you know so the kind of uh, the quality of the festival the screenings the events everything you know there's no comparison you know? so I don't know where where we lack and where uh, <laughs> there's still so much to do you know and uh, it, and uh, um, and and the coming of OTT seeing that we'll be able to reach a wider audience and uh, um, I don't know we have not been successful till now. Do you think that that there is an OTTization factor that has changed the shape of the indie film? Uh, because uh, you know when I was attending uh, you know film society screenings as as a teen and discovering world cinema. It was it was a very intimidating world, you know. It's like like the you the language itself was very different. Uh, everything was like like you know. I mean, it's fascinating, but it's also there's like they used to be more severe. You know, you watch a Czechoslovakian film or a Polish film, and it was just like wow, this is a whole new world of film. But today, when we when you get to like even uh, places like Cannes or um, other festivals, you know, like like Parasite, which I really enjoyed. But that becomes, uh, you know, that's that's that that becomes a kind of a model for uh, an art house film. So you know, so when you say people, world cinema earlier, it used to be a a kind of a certain kind of film, whereas today world cinema becomes a has become a broader broader term. Would you agree with that, Kimsey? Yeah, I think so. Well, for me, world cinema was always about uh, films that are outside. India, India some, yeah, yeah, you know, something um, that I can learn from, something new, something new about the culture, something new about another um, human traditions and things like that. Um, so, sorry, what was your question in the in a way? No, so my question was, has uh, because of the you know the way the digital world and other things has even world cinema kind of changed a bit in terms of what what festivals want to program and things like that. So that because they know that if they have only uh, very, very uh, pure or whatever you want to call it. I, I mean, art house, uh, <laughs> sorry. In the pure art house independent films. Yeah, so. yeah. So you might just not, not get the kind of buzz because they depend on, you know, coverage and, you know, again, the faces problem comes in and, you know. I would say it a mixture of both. Okay. I would say that yes, they have some stars to uh, attract the uh, the red carpet moments, and also they have filmmakers, you know, um, like Simon Liang, you know, and uh, other yeah. filmmakers, Chalan, Nuri Bil Chalan. But again, nothing can stop the audience uh, from seeing the film. I mean, people rush, and they're in there. There's madness for filmmakers, right? Right. Uh, you know, for such filmmakers. So I think. Uh, I would say that yes, it's 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 a mixture of both. So so Gaurav, when when let's say uh, Kim C comes to you with that right milestone, mm. what is like I'm talking about? How would an independent film producer? Are you there, Gaurav? Yes. Yeah. 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 How would an independent film producer approach a specialized OTT platform like you? What would they have to do? Uh, to get uh, you interested, right? So um, apart from the fact that the film is good, apart from that, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think how we built the model is that we felt that um, we are not uh, any other OTT platform where a film is just bought and then released. Uh, you know, I think what we have built in is the fact that the filmmaker are part of the distribution along with Cinema Pneur. So what happens is that we are saying that. You know, you've built a name, you've built a community, you've built uh, your audience. People know about you and you know who are the audiences who want to watch your film. I think what we are doing is we are trying to use uh, you know, the digitization of a theatrical model where we are saying that we are um, enabling your film to be digitally released on a ticketing model across the world. And you can price it different. You can keep it more for outside India, less for India. And you have to be a collaborator along with the platform. So right now, we have 40 filmmakers who are who have released their films. And then uh, every Friday, we are releasing one uh, independent feature film. So 
what's so beautiful is the kind of response we've got. So on 6th, we are releasing Vijay Jaipal's uh, first uh, film, uh, Revelations. Then we're releasing, uh, you know, a Maithili film. Then we're releasing, we've just released a Kannad film. We're releasing a Tamil film. So we are releasing Dawn's first feature film. I think uh, what our, uh, you know, point is that uh, to break even or to create a model, you know, um, it's going to be a, a year, uh, you know, a year long journey. However, how it works is a uh, lion's share of the ticket goes back to the independent filmmakers on every ticket view. So what we are saying is that we are not being very critical on the subject or the theme of the film. We're saying that let's utilize the power of crowd, community, and the networks. And why not be a, you know, like a co-distributor in this? What we feel is that there is a huge potential of untapped cinephile and audiences who, who do want to watch these films. And, and Cinema Pneur is helping you to reach to that audiences. So you, you don't see yourself as a kind of curator, more like a distributor. Uh, uh, actually, Bharat, this was a call we, we had to take on the very first day. Would you want to only screen 30 most amazing films from India? Or would you want to create a model which allows, say, uh, you know, 800 independent filmmakers from India? And I think we personally chose that would we, we want, want to be not a very, very, very niche platform or try to disrupt uh, and, and utilize the power of technology in uh, helping filmmakers because I so relate to Guru, what Gurvinder is saying because I have seen that. And I think Cinema Pneur is trying to enter exactly that space that there are these amazing storytellers from India who are being not uh, even answered or being approached or being heard by the mainstream world. However, there are uh, fans of his work who would, you know, any day watch the film if it is at a theater. So I think I am trying to enter that space where we say that, okay, we understand the real estate and the theaters do not allow you. Can we not use the power of digital distribution where you will also talk about your film to your independent community and we'll ensure that people can access the film. The film is discovered. I personally didn't know that Chauthi Koot and Ane Gorega Dan is not available. You know, I thought they, they are somewhere uh, you know, on some platform. And it really uh, makes me understand that what's the, you know, what's the problem here? The problem is that uh, you know, people are acquiring film and immediately they release and then you know, they're not bothered about the fact can the film not still be there and be accessible. So coming back to your point, I think uh, we are very open into the curing because uh, we want to utilize uh, technology and the online real estate is not as costly. So we don't have like a theatrical window where we only want to choose one or two films. We can choose more and use the power of online uh, technology. So Kimsi and Gurvinder, would that be a way to approach a film for you? Uh, would, that be, would, that, would that attract you as an option? Mm -hmm. I would say absolutely yes. And I'm very happy for the initiative that Gaurav has taken. And I think I must, we all must congratulate him for that. And I also think there should be so more, more OT, more, more initiatives like that happening, you know, so it gives us more confidence in making films and follow our passion. Uh, Gaurav, I have a question to ask you. Yes, sir. On your app interface, whether it's iOS or Android, uh, do uh, Google and Apple straight away take thirty percent of your ticket ticket uh, 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 ticket price? Right. So Suri, right now the apps are not launched because we wanted to do it in a phased out manner. So we've come up with a web and a mobile site. Okay. But I can still answer your question that yes, thirty percent is taken by the app companies as a blanket. Uh, you know, it charge. I find that a big uh, impediment. Yeah. Um, because they ultimately, uh, you know, if you want to reach a wider audience, everybody wants to have an app. And uh, just just to uh, Bharadwaj, if 30% if goes off as a gateway payment, right, then you're left with 70%, right? On 70%, Gaurav has to, uh, you know, carry the costs of all the 
various charges involved operation, in yeah. and operation and everything else. Mm -hmm. And how much can you give the filmmaker back? Then you, mm -hmm. uh, so on a hundred rupee ticket, you can, you know, probably give only 30 rupees or 35 rupees back to the filmmaker. It's essentially, you know, th th this whole model is for me, like, like not very, uh, you know, filmmaker friendly because that is the last and only option the filmmaker has. And so the, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we have, I've actually, you know, we aggregate both for uh, iTunes as well as, uh, well as uh, Google uh, for Android. So uh, I'm trying to press a case to them that, that in markets like India, which is so price sensitive, right? Um, you can't have these kind of disproportionate charges. But let's see. But uh, they're all monopolies at that one, one level, right? So uh, when I looked up the website of Vista India Suri, I saw this interesting statement. We support independent filmmakers with the dig digital distribution of their films worldwide. Uh, how do you do this? Okay, let's, I mean, I mean, <clears throat> it's, it's not, it, it, why we make this broad statement, okay? I am not particularly, uh, thrilled with my my company or my my own ability to deliver uh, uh, you know meaningful revenues to independence okay um, we are just a part of the supply chain which means that uh, that we do all the all the grunt work needed to get your your film onto an iTunes uh, uh, encoding spec so that it's available across all the iTunes stores worldwide. I think they're in 87 countries. We subtitle for you if you want your product dubbed. We started to do a dubbing it, right? Uh, we we do the same thing for uh, for Google for Google Play again available. I think in 26 odd countries. We do the same thing for Amazon Prime Video, uh, and for Netflix, we propose any film that we get, right? We we propose the film. Not to say that that the chances of of uh, of the platform picking up an independent film is relatively low. Uh, by independent, I mean essentially non uh, star cast film. Okay, just to, uh, to I think it's easier to classify star cast and non star cast. You know, because almost all films in India, including the South films, are made independently. They're yeah. funded independently. So there's you know there's no big studios operating in India. Uh, so, so almost all the films are independent. So we enable all these films to be, to, to have the ability for them to get into these, uh, these various services. Uh, Gurvinder, I must, uh, I must reach out to you with my team and get, make sure that you're available at least on the iTunes store and, uh, the, uh, the Google play store. So, uh, so, uh, you know, so that you, the product is there. Now, uh, the challenge is uh, uh, that we do not have, and the truth is uh, difficult for us to, as, as an independent uh, film watching community, to say that the truth is that we don't have enough of a market out there. Uh, because if the market is there, then, then it would be very easy uh, uh, you know, for us to recover because our films are made with very modest budgets. And so it, it would be a, a, it would be a great win-win situation if in this land of a billion people that there must be at least uh, 10 million people who speak uh, that Pahari language. And even if you get uh, a tiny fraction of them to watch the film, uh, Gurinder's budget is done, you know. Uh, uh, but in reality, that is not the thing. And the second thing that we find that e is that by and large, Indians don't like paying here. We are a nation that doesn't like to pay, right? Uh, and, it's, and it's even more so on the internet, right? Uh, which is why you will still find, uh, you know, Hotstar is at one rupee a day. You know, so you're getting all high quality HBO shows and, and Disney shows at you know, one rupee a day. Where in the world will you get it at that price? So, uh, so it's a it's a overall tough situation, and I think that that part of it has to do with the fact that we don't have uh, dedicated uh, alternative cinema screens in the country, uh, or even if you get a screen and you manage to rustle up enough money to uh, to convince uh, to go in for PVR, they give you show times which are which are just ridiculous show times. 
audience, you know, where your core audience doesn't uh, doesn't have it. So I think that I've always believed that we could support uh, uh, an art house sort of circuit in India of maybe 200 screens or so. You know, I'm not even looking at it in terms of thousands of screens, just 200 screens in select cities, which would give you, because I think there's nothing beats a theatrical experience because you do watch, I mean, you go to and see a great Italian film in a, in a, in a movie theater, yeah, I mean, and then you, you, you feel the pulse for it and then you talk to other people yeah, yeah. And, and that's how you can inherently market a film that in, in, in our genre. I mean, that is the, the, the thing. And I, uh, it's just a, a little sad that the, that the theater chains have not been really very supportive, you know, um, or alternatively, they're giving very poor show times. I think PBR does have a program where they try and do this, but, but from what I've seen, uh, they, they, they program it as and when they have very low, uh, you know, low show times where even a commercial film would, anybody wouldn't come, you know, sometime in the afternoon or something. But do you think that part of this is also what Kimsey said a little earlier, which is that we are making more films than there's space uh, to exhibit them? Because, uh, you know, let's say you're at Cannes and a cinephile makes a list of 15 films that they want to watch. By the next month, there's another festival that's added another 15, 20 films. And by the next month, there's another festival that's added another 15, 20 films. So it's like, by the time, it's like bookmarking pages that you want to read later. You know, you do it to the best of intentions, but then suddenly you discover you have a thousand bookmarks and then you don't know where to, you know, you get, it gets a little dizzy. Do you think that there's a way to fix that uh, issue? I got of you're nodding very enthusiastically. I, do you have an answer for that? No, I, I think I relate with the fact that there is too much content and too many choices. And I think I've also bookmarked a lot of things and procrastinated. So I think the nod was for that. Uh, but I think what we are, uh, you know, realizing is that with multiple options and multiple content being available, there are all, also multiple tastes. And I think uh, what Suri said that, you know, pricing of one rupee or, you know, two rupee per day, I think that's when you play for the 400 million. So if, if a hot star, which the number says that it has around 400 million users, you know, you're playing at that scale. However, when we come down to uh, offbeat and taste-based choices. I think the numbers are still lower, but uh, people would definitely want to explore. So um, there would be hundreds of cinephiles who look at one festival and then, you know, watch those films and with another festival, there would be another set of audiences. That's what I feel. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But in terms of acquiring content, uh, how has the response been for you? Like, like, has the has the higher profile of of director uh, have have they been uh, easier to convince about your model? Right. So, uh, you know, uh, I I tested this out at Film Bazaar last year, where I went and met a lot of filmmakers. So I've met around uh, you know 100 200 filmmakers. I think what we realized is that uh, this is going to take some time because. Uh, as we grow and as we build audiences and as we understand what's working, how uh, technology can be fine-tuned, I think we'll see a lot of mains, like the better filmmakers also coming in. But to be honest, I'm absolutely amazed at the response which we've got in 90 days. So right now, as we speak, I mean, our November calendar is absolutely amazing. And we have some really good lineup for December. And you know the best players from independent cinema are also talking to us, which is uh, I thought that personally it's going to be a one-year journey. Where after the one year, we'll approach uh, you know the filmmakers saying that can you explore an online theatrical model with us? Where right. let's go for uh, you know a certain um, uh, push and release online, and let's see if the audiences want to watch. Uh, but I'll say that it's happening faster than what we had thought. Um, and to be honest, when we opened our call for entry for films. Uh, you know, we got 200 submissions from obviously the most amateur filmmaker to really good filmmakers. So I think uh, what we felt that more than us saying that this is a need, I think the filmmakers told themselves that, yes, um, there is a gap. And I think we are addressing the gap that can you not do it in an online way where the concept is very similar to what a theatrical model would be that let's pay tickets, let's pay to watch films, and then let's use the power of community. 
Okay, great. So uh, I'm going to take some questions uh, that have come up. Uh, uh, okay, Yash Saraf has what he calls a crude question. Suri mentioned license fees being smaller on movies slash alternative platforms. In terms of hard numbers, could you give us an overview of what the license fees look like, how this impacts budgets, investor expectations, etc.? Movie and, and other platforms are not going to move move your needle to anything where it's going to make an investor feel happy, boss. Mm -hmm. It is very, very difficult uh, to, to, to actually uh, sort of recover money on this, on this window, uh, even for, for some of the established filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Because theatrical still remains a big, uh, big source of revenue in India. Uh, your, uh, your television and your OTT will come next. Uh, platforms like movie, etc., at least uh, for Indian films, they're very new in this country. So the and then they play it only for one month. They basically license it only for a, for a period of one month, and uh, you're free to license it to other platforms. So I'm not even going to get into the numbers, but the numbers are very very small and will not convince uh, any investor. I, I, I think that it's, 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 I don't want to get into the details of it, uh, but, the, but the, you know, the license fees are very small for it because they are curating for just for 30 days, right? Uh, and they give you a modest amount, but it's more of building a community of people who watch films like that. Uh, Gurvinder, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there is a, there is somebody who asks you, Krishna Prasad says, I'm amazed that Gurvinder is being so pessimistic about platforms and the future of good cinema. He's being indulged. I love that all opinions are welcome here. And I think it's a function of this platform being for good cinema. Isn't it so essential to be sometimes disagreeable to establishment views in order that art can thrive? Maybe the need of the hour is more dissent and not agreeing with market forces. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think I need to prove anything, you know. I mean, you know, the films we make are anyway dissent, you know, against the market forces, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I sometimes feel, uh, you know, that it's a, it's a miracle that I've been able to make the films I have made. And, uh, I, and I wonder how they got made, you know, <laughs> with the kind of market forces that work. Uh, so, uh, but you know how much? Uh, I mean, uh, should one? I mean, uh, uh, I, mean I, I would say, what, 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 what does a director do after having made the film? You know, it's, it's not. I don't have the skills to market a film. I don't have the skills to sell a film. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I, have, I have no knowledge of that. And uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, after having ma made these films, um, I'm. I'm I would love to go on making the kind of films I make, but right now I feel, you know, that uh, at the end of the day, you know, the person who's asked the question, I mean, we also have to make our ends meet, you know, we also have to um, have certain basic, um, uh, you know, today if one is still living in the kind of, you know, insecurity that, you know, where is the next film going to come from? Uh, films are not sending, the film is not anywhere. None of my films have made any money. No. Yeah. But Gurvinder, I saw Chauti Kut on Netflix. I, I, I'm a little surprised to see that it isn't there anymore. I'm, I mean, I don't know whether it dropped out or I don't know what happened to it. So. Yeah, I can shed some light into it because we did the licensing on it. Okay. <laughs> they li Netflix usually licenses for a period, whether it be okay. three years or, or, or maybe a little longer. I don't know how many years that was. It was three years. Three years, right? Yeah. And uh, and then it is renewed, okay, right now. What what I believe, okay, not that I'm privy to this data, right? Our renewals are very very infrequent. Yeah. Like let's say a film like Lagan might get renewed, okay, right? But by and large, they want to use that budget to do make to put out new films. Okay, so 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 the the, the fact is 
that mm -hmm. everybody wants something new. All you notice in this OTT platforms, they, and that comes down to the content being made. I mean, you see like Z5, they dump a new new project every few days, yeah. Kitna dekhega me, you know. I mean, it is it is just the, the copious amounts of pro, of product that gets put in. It's like a never-ending buffet which you can't eat enough of, you know. They can't enjoy one film before another one comes, you know. So there's just I like I sometimes get confused on what to watch. Yeah. So I, I land up like saying, fuck it, I'll just read a book. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But you know, it's like that. It's 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 just a uh, thing. And so what happens is that often the the renewal process doesn't happen. So so that's why the film goes back to Gurinder, and he's free to do what what it is um, that he wants with it. Uh, Kinsey, there's a question that I think you may be interested in taking. Uh, starting out making non-commercial films, it's even hard to find people who would invest and help you develop your stories, writing, etc. because their taste is still driven by the quintessential Bombay cinema style of storytelling. Where do we go? Are film labs the only saving grace for indie filmmakers then when starting out? Yes, for your first film, film lab is the saving place for you. I would say, because there is no one else in the world who would stand by you, uh, you know, in terms of financing, uh, because you, you, people will come and support you once you have all the money with you, you see, but nobody will come and say, I'm here with you and I'll raise funds for you. No one will say that. So you, so basically just starting out, you somehow have to, you know, do your day, day job. And then maybe pursue it as a passion project in order to get into that, you know, and, and you have to put in your own funds or maybe somebody raise funds from somewhere, but it's very difficult. I think that we've reached the end of the questions. Uh, I think most of the other, oh, Ritu, I don't know if you want to take this. Uh, this is an interesting, it'd be interesting to see what you have to say to this. Ritu, are you there? So basically the question is, uh, okay, she's not there, but the question is, is there a new solution to the massive entry fee for film festivals like Dharamshala or others like Mami, Bangalore, Kolkata? Because <clears throat> it all together come, becomes a big amount and then it becomes more than the budget of the film thoughts. Uh, there's one thing that you have to say is that, you know, film festivals need money as well. So I guess, you know, uh, to run because, it, you know, running a film festival is almost as difficult as probably putting together an independent film. So, uh, but do you guys have any thoughts on this? Uh, no? Okay. Uh, Okay, I think we've reached the end of that. So thank you so much, all of you. Uh, it's been a very interesting question, uh, dis discussion, and uh, yes, a somewhat depressing one, uh, which, uh, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it, we covered a lot of changes. It's like, uh, this is the time Gurvinda chooses to smile. Uh, so it's like, it's been somewhat, uh, but thank you, uh, Gaurav, for your initiative. Uh, I really uh, hope that uh, you know, with time uh, uh, and and with support and encouragement, you find uh, you know, like like it grows bigger and bigger and becomes a kind of a a way forward for people to showcase their films uh, with a, a model. And I hope there are other different business models that come in that that help people to uh, you know find people because I think one of the biggest things that I do is uh, you know sometimes when uh, is just keeping track of films because there are so many films. And I hope that that what, uh, you know, Gurvinder Singh al uh, said also becomes uh, something that, uh, what Gurvinder said becomes true, which is like, basically, just like Netflix, for instance, they have a, you know, the top 10 on Netflix right now, there's a band that goes across, you know, where you see like little images of, of all the top 10 films. So you quickly, you get that reminder, you know, maybe there, there's going to be platforms in the future where you have, uh, you know, if not the top 10, then at least, uh, you know, 10 interesting films to watch right now or something like that. So that there's a reminder, you know, so that you don't forget that, oh, this is a, a note that you made or, you know, you want, oh, I've always wanted to watch this film. Let me watch it now. Uh, 
thank you, Suri, Kimsi, so much for your inputs. Again, Govinda, Gaurav, everyone. And thank you, Diff, for uh, making every festival a very special one. So sorry that this year we couldn't have a uh, physical festival. Uh, I saw Kanar uh, last year at, at Dharamchala, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm memory serving me right, Govinda, it was at uh, yeah, we, uh, It was right? Mami, where we had a QA. <laughs> oh, okay, Mami, sorry, okay, now I'm getting confused. So, okay, right, okay. So, thank you so much, everyone, and uh, let's hope that the way forward is much better. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.